Coming in at number 10, we have the Virgin Mary lip syncing. This is absolutely insane. In 2015, parishioners at the St. Charles Church in Sydney, Australia, got a shock when they reported seeing the lips of Virgin Mary move in sync with the Lord's Prayer. For those skeptical, two churchgoers actually filmed the incident. The painting hangs above the church altar and is thought to have come from the Middle East. Footage filmed by young Catholic Christian curers was uploaded to YouTube, and I have to say, it really does look like the Virgin Virgin Mary's mouth is moving. It also looks like Christ's hand moves at one point too. Kristen spoke to the press and said, I believe it was a miracle and not just lighting because we all saw it at the same time and because her lips would start moving and then stop and then start again. Coming in at number nine, we have the anguished man. I absolutely cannot stand looking at this picture. I know that art is subjective, but I can't imagine having to look at this painting ever, let alone having it as a focal spot in my home. This painting is called The Anguished Man, and the urban legend goes that it was painted with the artist's own blood mixed with oil shortly before they killed themselves. That's right, painted in blood, then they committed suicide. Great! Once again, why would you ever hang this? The owner, Sean Robinson, was handed down the painting by his grandmother, but claims he doesn't display it because nobody likes it, and I wonder why. On the few times that he has displayed the picture, he and his family have reported strange goings on such as bangs and voices and strange smells. They even reported that the painting moves of its own accord. Trying to find proof, Sean set up a camera in his spare room and recorded the activity over the evening. This is a piece of the footage that was recorded in June 2011. That's right, there it is! Now according to Sean, the painting was at an angle and against the wall and there was no drafts present so it should not have been able to fall like that. This next one is a little bit of an urban legend, but stories are all over the internet. Coming in at number 8, we have Sonny's suicide painting. So according to urban legend, a teenage Japanese girl called Sonny drew this picture and then scanned it into her computer and uploaded it to the internet. The image reportedly had quite the effect on viewers, who said that they saw sadness in her eyes, they also saw her face change expressions after staring at her. In South Korea, the story garnered a lot of momentum and people would claim that they stared at her for longer than 5 minutes, her face would twist into a taunting smirk. According to the legend, some people who stared at the picture for longer than those five minutes were compelled to commit suicide. Now it turns out it is all just an urban legend though, and the picture is by an artist called Robert Klang. The girl in the image is a fictional character called Princess Rue. Coming in at number seven, we have the misty painting of Bernardo de Galvez. Look at this majestic fellow! This is powerful historical Spaniard Bernardo de Galvez, who was instrumental in the Spanish military in the late 1700s. The city of Galveston in Texas is named after him, as is the city hotel, Hotel Galvez. In the hotel, there is an oil painting of Bernardo that is reportedly haunted by none other than the chap himself. The painting sits at the end of the downstairs hallway and is quite the feature. Despite being a beautiful old painting, a lot of the guests at the hotel simply don't like it one bit. A lot of people have complained that they feel cold when they're near the painting, and almost all guests of the hotel will tell you that they feel Bernardo's eyes moving to watch you. It seems if you try and take a picture of the painting without asking permission of the late great Bernardo de Galvez, it will come out blurry. However, if you ask nicely, the picture will be clear. Those eyes though, I mean, they're clearly seeing you. Coming in at number 6, we have the painting of Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan. This 1885 painting by Russian realist artist Ilya Repin has been causing a stir since it was created. The painting shows a more mortally wounded Ivan being cradled by his Tsar father, who has wounded him. It is reported in history that he murdered him, although a lot of critics challenge the historical accuracy of that statement and this painting. Nonetheless, it is one of the most famous Russian classics, and it is currently in the Moscow State Tetchikov Gallery. When the painting was first unveiled, a lot of people claimed to be deeply unsettled by it. Some say they saw something terrible within the picture, other than the already terrible subject matter. In 1913, a mentally ill man slashed the painting with a knife, and it was restored by Repin himself. Once again, the painting was slashed in 2018 by a visitor to the Moscow Museum. Now He reported to be shouting that he saw terrible images moving within the picture. The man was identified as Igor Podporin, who claimed that he was overwhelmed by something. He later blamed vodka for his outburst. Coming in at number 5, we have Love Letters. Love Letters is a painting of a 4-year-old girl, Samantha Houston, who was painted by Richard King in a style of a pre-existing
interesting work by Charles Trevor Garland. Samantha was the daughter of a Texan US senator who died in 1887, aged four, when she tripped and fell down a staircase as she sadly chased a ball. It seems, as a tribute, the Driscoll Hotel in Texas had a painting of her commissioned. Now this still stands there today on the fifth floor. It seems that Samantha's spirit may have imprinted on the picture as guests say that they've heard her giggling when they're nearby. Many guests report feeling like she's trying to tell them something, saying that they've seen her expression change when they look at the picture. Coming into number four, we have a moving morning portrait. Now this is a really scary video uploaded to YouTube in August 2008. Uploaded by Haunting Painting, it is called Scary Ghost Girl Painting Movements Captured and pretty accurate. The painting is of an unknown child in the 18th century and is reportedly a mourning painting, a memento mori. This basically means a painting of a person that's died and it's been commissioned in order to remember them. Now it seems that this mystery girl is haunting her own painting. The narrator of the video says that she sometimes weeps and that occasionally her mouth opens. Now this moment was captured on camera, right? Terrifying! Now a lot of people in the comment section are calling this fake but honestly I really didn't like looking at this picture while I was scripting this video. Coming into number three, we have a painting of a headless man. I am not okay with this painting. Why? Well, because at first it looks like a nice little depiction of an old station wagon. That is until you realize there's a freaking headless man hovering around in it like a decapitated creep. The artist Laura P painted this image in response to a photograph James Kidd had taken of a stagecoach stop in Tombstone, Arizona. Her finished painting was hung at an office in Arizona, but after three days, staff demanded it be returned to her. Her. Workers said that their papers would go missing and that the painting seemed to always move. They reported that despite being constantly straightened, the painting would always become crooked on the wall. Laura then took the painting back and hung it at her home. Unfortunately for her, the weird occurrences surrounding the picture followed her. She said that doors would start opening and closing on their own in the room that the painting was in and a glass even smashed in her hand right in front of the picture. Laura has expressed a desire to have the image destroyed, regretting ever creating the painting. She is worried what will happen if she does have it destroyed though. She doesn't want to anger the spirit. Coming into number two, we have The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch. Like Edvard basically just needed a hug. If you recognize his name, that's because he is the artist that was famously behind The Scream. I don't like The Scream either. I mean, it's a very, very good painting and very expressionist, but it freaks me out. However, I have to say this painting freaks me out harder. Munch's work is notoriously filled with pain and anguish, which is more likely than not down to his poor health and his difficult upbringing. His mother died when he was five, which probably explains this unsettling painting. Now the painting is called The Dead Mother and was completed in 1900. The picture is already scary to look at, but it gets even creepier when you hear what those who have owned it or worked with it have to say. Firstly, the little girl's eyes are said to incessantly follow people wherever they go, but worse still, it is said that the sheets on the dead mother's bed rustle or move. Some have even sworn that the little girl leaves the painting altogether. Coming into number one, we have the hands resisting painting. Ugh, this again. I feel like this has come up on a few top tens before and I do not like it. The hands resisting painting gained notoriety in 2000 when it sold on eBay for just over $1,000. The seller claimed it was haunted and actually, it probably is. Reportedly, three people involved with displaying the painting died, including the art dealer and the art critic who first reviewed the piece. Hands resistant is a painting by Bill Stoneman. Now, the name is said to have come from a poem written by his wife about her husband's adoption. In the painting, a boy is seen standing next to a creepy looking doll whilst disembodied hands pour a glass panel door behind him. The painting was found abandoned in a Californian brewery, which is where it seems the couple who listed it on eBay found it. Their wife wrote, one morning our four and a half year old daughter claimed that the children in the picture were fighting and coming into the room during the night. Now I don't believe in UFOs or Elvis being alive, but my husband was alarmed. To my amusement, he set up a motion triggered camera for the night. Now the couple claimed that the motion camera even captured the boy exiting the frame under duress from the doll. It was also thought that the hands in the background move. I don't like this. Now the painting was bought by gallery owner Kim Smith, who shows it on request. She does so less and less these days because people keep on complaining of falling ill after viewing the picture. Since gaining notoriety for hands resistant, Bill Stoneman has created a prequel and a sequel image, both of which are horrifying. Signing us off for number 
10 is the Altamira cave paintings. These cave paintings are located near Santillana del Mar, which is in the northern part of Spain. Funnily enough, the paintings were discovered by accident by a hunter named Modesto Cubias in 1868, but weren't giving much mind until 1879. These paintings shocked everyone, and I mean everyone. Why? Because it was so well preserved, specialists seriously doubted their authenticity. The paintings were done around 35,600 years ago, yet their colors and details were so vibrant it was quite suspicious. It was only at the start of the 20th century that they were accepted as authentic. These paintings are single handedly the biggest pieces of evidence of Magdalenian culture, and most depict charcoal and okra, ochre, ochre, let me know if that's how you say it, pictures of horses, handprints, and bisons. They were so impressive that Picasso himself said after Altamira, all is decadence. I mean, that's a, that's pretty heavy words from Picasso himself. Coming in at number 9 are the aliens. These pictographs were found in the Wanamura Gorge in Australia, again my apologies if I said that wrong. These paintings date back to approximately 3000 BC and they depict the aboriginal one genus, I hope I said that right as well, I probably didn't, I'm sorry, which is a type of religious deity or supreme spirit that were the creators of land and people. But the way they've depicted them is just super weird, they literally look like white versions of the alien emojis on our phone. White faces with no mouth and large black holes for eyes, and they also have this sort of halo around them. The other black figures drawn amongst them look like what can only be described as closely resembling Dementors from Harry Potter. Some interpretations of these paintings say that extraterrestrial beings visited Earth tens of thousands of years ago and had direct contact with these people. Some Aboriginals believe that they even played a role in creation, which could explain why they drew the Wanginas looking like aliens. At number eight, we have the Chauvet Cave. This one is located in the south of France and only really gained notoriety in 1994 after three speleologists discovered its walls were covered in paleolithic artwork and that it also contained the fossilized remains of various animals, many of which had become extinct by then. So that's a lot of useful scientific and historical knowledge in that cave already and we haven't even specifically talked about the art yet. The cave shocked people for many reasons, it was ridiculously large and the quantity and quality of the art artwork found was quote unquote spectacular. It's literally been named a cave that has some of the best preserved figurative cave paintings in the world, which is insane since most of the art there is 30 to 32,000 years old. The paintings had animals in there that had never appeared in previous ice age paintings, as well as many other animals that had. Surprisingly, it had no paintings of full human figures, just one figure that seemed to be a vulva attached to an unfinished pair of legs. As of now, it's one of the most significant prehistoric art sites on earth and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Filling our number 7 slot is Las Giel, Las Giel, Las Gol. There were so many types of pronunciations I really don't know which one's right, please don't slate me in the comments. <laughs> These are the cave formations found in the rural parts of Hargeisa in Somaliland. Even though the cave was known to locals of that area for ages, the caves only gained international attention in 2002 when an archaeological survey was undertaken by French researchers and they were shocked to find this cave undocumented. The cave contains very vivid paintings which are some of the earliest known cave paintings in the Horn of Africa. The rock art was created between 9000 and 3000 BC and it's so well preserved till this day because of the granite overhangs. The artwork features cattle in ceremonial robes with humans and the necks of the cattle are embellished with plastron, which is basically the flat part of a turtle shell. I didn't know that either but now you do as well. And they also include other animals like dogs and giraffes. The colours are on these paintings are so vivid, I would believe if someone told me they literally painted them a month ago rather than thousands of years ago. Now at number 6 are the psychedelics. Tassili Najar is a national park located in southeast Algeria. And of course, these caves also became part of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites list in 1982. Most of the art in there dates back 12,000 years and there are more engravings than there are paintings. There are 15,000 engravings in the cave and they consist of mostly large animals like crocodiles and antelopes and it even has humans dancing and hunting. But they also include something called fungoid rock art. Back in 1989, psychedelics researcher Giorgio Samarini claimed that the paintings that look like fungoids were proof that people inhabiting the Sahara Desert had taken psychedelics. There's one bit of artwork that depicts various masked figures in a line dressed as dancers surrounded by festoons. And each dancer has a mushroom-like object in their hand with lines coming out of the mushroom and connecting to the 
the dancer's head. Now it's obviously open to interpretation on what the picture means, but I think you can see why Giorgio took away from it what he did. And believe it or not, psychedelics aside, the caves also house alien depictions, flying saucer-like figures in the sky, and people that look like humans but have one eye and just have very alien-like features. The pictures are quite creepy, I'm not gonna lie, but these caves seem to just have it all. Coming in at number five is the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. Yes, I'm not kidding you, that's what some people have nicknamed the Lascaux Caves. Located in the southwestern part of France, there are a lot of caves in France on this list, I just realized. The caves have in them more than 600 paintings, mostly of big mammals in the area, humans, and abstract signs. The art inside the cave is meticulously split into those three categories. The paintings were the product of a huge combined effort spanning many generations. The earliest painting was done 17,000 years ago. However, there's one painting called the Crossed Bison that grabbed everyone's attention. The crossed hind legs of the animal create the illusion that one bison is closer to the viewer than the other. The fact that Paleolithic cave painters had that skill and primitive form of perspective is evidence that they were advanced for their time. And funnily enough, the entrance of the cave was found by an 18 year old walking his dog and his dog fell into a hole which ended up being the tunnel. The boy came back with three friends thinking the tunnel was an entrance into the Lascaux Manor but then they found the paintings. By 1995 the cave had 1,200 daily visitors but that created a preservation problem because lichens and crystals began to develop and on top of that they started having a huge fungus problem as well so they've convened many times to see how they can preserve the cave. At number 4 are the x-ray paintings. The Kakadu National Park is a protected area in the northern part of Australia and the place is a massive, I'm talking the size of the country Slovenia massive. It's also home to one of the earth's biggest concentrations of rock artwork. Some are nearly 20,000 years old and they provide an insight into Aboriginal life like nothing else has before. The park has two main galleries, Burungku, Burungkai and Uber, Uber, I really, I'm sorry if I pronounce those wrong, I know I did, I'm sorry. For these people, the act of painting was more important than the painting itself and so they cover all the paintings with the newer ones. The art shows the objects they use every day, the things they do and the animals they hunt. Some paintings can only be done by the person with the right knowledge, so someone who had no magic knowledge could not do a sorcery painting for example. They would paint animals in order to place them in touch with the spirit of that animal which would hopefully ensure them a successful hunt. But the painters didn't just draw the animals, they drew their organs and their bones as well which is the first time discoverers had found depictions like that and hence they were called x-ray paintings. Filling our number 3 slot are the underwater paintings. This one's about the Kosky cave located near Masai, France. The cave was discovered by a man named Henry Kosky back in 1985 but the public only found out about it 6 years later when 3 divers actually got lost and died in the cave. But if you wanted to find the cave today you would just have to go through a 175 meter long tunnel which is all well and good except the entrance to that is 37 meters under sea level. That puts a bit of a spanner in the works I think. Sadly 4 fifths of the cave's art was permanently submerged underwater and hence destroyed but 150 pieces of cave art are still intact. Art like hand stencils date back to 27,000 years BP and the newer art of different animals and signs dates back to 19,000 years BP. People were stunned at the fact the art was A underwater and B it was partially intact. In circumstances like that the art would usually be lost so it was miraculous that it hadn't been and that's why it deserves the number 3 slot I think. You guys can disagree. Now at number 2 are the Magura cave paintings. This cave is located in the northwest region of Bulgaria. All the paintings were done from bat poo and are done on stone. This is probably the most extensive series of cave paintings ever found and they actually cover a range of epics. The Neolithic, some other ones that I can't pronounce so I'm not going to try and even the start of the early bronze age. There are more than 700 drawings in the cave and they fall into 4 groups. Zoomorphic, symbolic, anthropomorphic and geo geometric figures. The figures are mostly stick figures and not extremely detailed but it's very easy to grasp what they're trying to depict. The cave was formed nearly 15 million years ago and you'd have to walk a good 1.6 miles to cover the whole thing. It has one main gallery that includes 6 halls and the largest one being the Arc Hall that's 69 feet high and 420 feet long. This cave is filled with quote unquote art and is bigger than nearly all art galleries in the world. No wonder people were shook, I would be too. And finally at number 1 is the K2 
Cave of Hands, also known as Cueva de las Manos. These caves are located in Argentina and are insanely famous for the numerous, numerous hands painted inside the caves. The art dates back to 13,000 to 9,000 years ago, and obviously, a lot of different groups of people occupied the caves during that time. I mean, some of the earliest artwork has been carbon dated to 7,300 BC. All the hands inside the cave are stenciled, and most of them are left hands, indicating that the people probably used their right hand to hold the spraying pipe or they sprayed the back of their right hand with their left. It made sense, trust me. Either way, the cave was filled with hands. There was also artwork of full human beings, geometric shapes, hunting scenes, etc. They used mineral pigments to make the images, like iron oxides to get the reds and purples, manganese oxide to make black, and so on. The site became a UNESCO World Heritage Site back in 1999, and people were glad. It's not every day you stumble upon a cave that's filled with sprayed hands dating to 7,300 BC. Just thinking about how much history took place in that cave and all the different people those hands could have belonged to and what their lives would have been like, I mean, it just blows my mind. It really does. All right, starting off this countdown, we have the painting of Samantha Houston by Richard King. So, this painting doesn't look all that scary. It shows a cute little girl in a pink dress smiling while holding a bunch of pink roses. Honestly, if I didn't know the backstory, I wouldn't regard this as a scary painting. So, apparently, this is a painting of a girl who fell to her death after chasing her ball down the stairs. This painting was made in her honor and hung up in the Drizkill Hotel, which is the place that she passed away. Um, excuse me? The hotel is called Drizkill? Coincidence? I think not. Well, Anyways, guests at the hotel have claimed that they feel dizzy and nauseous while around the painting. Others have claimed that they have felt as if they were being lifted off the ground, or have even seen the girl change expressions. Now, some people own replicas of this piece of art, and they too have felt dizzy and nauseous around it. As a result, those people have had to remove those paintings from their home. Although some people have this painting locked away, unfortunately, I believe that the original painting still remains on the fifth floor of this hotel. Moving on to number nine, we have the painting called The Left Hand by Theodore Jericol. Now, this painting comes with a dark backstory. Apparently, the artist Jean Louis Andre Theodore would buy amputated limbs from the morgue as models for his paintings. He would keep these limbs in his house for weeks while he painted them. I mean, of course, he couldn't have used his own hand or his friend's hand as a reference. No. He literally gave a new meaning to need a hand? Well, anyway, some people believe that his paintings are cursed by the people whose body parts he used as a reference. Some people have claimed that they have felt a cold hand on the back of their neck, or even felt a slight push while looking at this painting. The scariest fact about this is that Theodore died 8 hours after finishing this piece of work. Thankfully, this particular piece of art is no longer on display. At number 8, we have the painting of Marie Laveau. Now, this image is carefully on display at the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum. Some people say that they can feel Marie's cold eyes watching them. Others say that once you see this image, then Marie will haunt you and even will show up in your nightmares. Oh, well, dang. I guess I won't be sleeping tonight. In fact, tour guides say that whoever wishes to see the painting must go alone. They refuse to go see it themselves. Others also claim that when they take a picture of the painting, their photos won't develop. So, go to that museum and check out that painting if you're brave enough. Next up at number 7, we have the painting called Soul Bowl. Now, with a name like that, what do you expect? So, this piece of artwork was listed on a website called Trade Me, and the user wanted it out of her life, claiming that it was haunted. So, this painting is of a bowl, with the background almost looking like it could resemble the flames of hell. Now, along the sides of the painting, it reads, The shape of my soul is a bowl. Creepy. Now, this painting was bought at an antique shop in New Zealand. However, after they brought this painting home, scary things started happening. She claims that some nights the painting would fall off the wall. She also claims that another night she saw a dark silhouette go from her bedroom to the painting. After numerous other paranormal encounters, she decided to sell it. I wouldn't think anyone would want a painting marketed as haunted, but apparently people like to collect spooky things. The painting ended up being sold for $123 to an anonymous buyer. She believes that this buyer took it off of her hands out of good nature and either burned it, locked it away, or tried to get in contact with the spirit. Next up at number 6, we have The Spirit of the Bartender by Will Refuse. 
Now, I personally love thrift shopping. I love the sustainability aspect of it and how it's better for the environment. Now, I only buy clothes and I think I'm just gonna stick to doing that because this next individual claims that they bought a haunted painting from the thrift store. Now, in this story, a group of buds moved in together. One roommate bought some furniture and a painting from the thrift store. So this painting was of a ventriloquist dummy looking bartender. He is seen with big eyes and a creepy smile. They claimed that the bartender's eyes would follow you around the room and they felt uneasy about it. One of the guys even claimed that when you are alone with it, you feel like there's another presence with you. Two months later, things started happening around their house. One day, one of the roommates heard a loud bang at the door, but no one was there. The banging continued and every time he checked, no one was there. Then you would hear loud footsteps running up and down the stairs. Eventually, one of the roommates moved out and took the painting with him and donated it to the bar that he worked at. But apparently, they also experienced paranormal activity and ended up throwing it out. Now, if you research this artist, it shows that he paints a lot of the same things over and over again. It always involves some ventriloquist looking person and there are different variations of this bartender photo. It's quite creepy. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the painting of Maria Ivanova. Now, this piece of art was painted by a Russian artist by the name of Vladimir Borovikovsky. It was painted in 1797 of a young woman named Maria before she passed away from tuberculosis. Now, people believe that this painting causes bad luck to whoever looks at it. Well, that's great. Looks like I'm getting bad luck and so are all of you. So, ooh. They believe that this painting had some sort of power that could cause death to any unmarried girl. Dang it, that's me again. Also, it doesn't help that the girl's last name has Ivan in it. People also blame the painting for a bunch of tragic deaths of young girls that happened around the same time. They believe that their souls are now trapped inside the painting by an evil spirit. Moving on at number four, we have the haunted thrifted painting. Again, don't buy your paintings from the thrift stores. So this was posted on Reddit one year ago by the user Young Balsamic. He claims that one day he was thrift shopping when he came across this painting. Now he did claim that he does like creepy dark things so it wasn't too weird for him to buy this scary painting. Now although this looks badly hand painted, he claimed that the painting spoke to him and he felt overwhelmed like he just had to have it. After a few days he noticed that his cupboards would open and close, lights would flicker and things would fall down. He would even hear scratching coming from the wall that the painting was on. Then he started to see a dark figure in his dreams. He said that he would get stuck in some sort of sleep paralysis and he would be visited by a figure with no eyes. He then would start to have the same reoccurring dream every night. He even said he was visited by the faceless people in this painting. That's when he decided to take apart the painting. When he removed the frame, he said that his whole house started to smell like sulfur. He also realized a dark cross was painted on the back of this image. He then put this painting in his basement storage locker where it still remains. He doesn't know what to do with it and is scared to burn it with the fear that he will annoy the demons. I mean, I would just donate it back to the thrift stores, let them deal with it. In our third spot, we have the portrait of the doll. Now, unfortunately, this piece does not have any pictures associated with it, and I will explain why. So, this is a story of another girl who bought a painting from a thrift store. Don't buy paintings from thrift stores. So, similar to the guy I mentioned before, this girl felt drawn to this particular photo. She felt like she was lured into buying it. This picture was of an old doll. She claims that when she hung it up in her room, she immediately felt like she was being watched. Even her friends that slept over would say the same thing. Now, she doesn't know who the artist is and can't find a picture of the painting online. She thinks that it's an original piece of art. Now, she was getting really scared from this painting that she too hid it in a storage room. Immediately, the uneasy feeling she felt before just stopped. But she claims that whenever she goes down to the storage room, the same feeling overwhelms her. Coming in at number two, we have the painting of the weeping children. Now, this is a collection of paintings created by Giovanni Bragolin. All of his paintings in the series depict little girls and boys all crying. It is said that whoever owns these paintings will face tragedy. In fact, a string of house fires were all thought to have been caused by these paintings. All of the houses that caught on fire were completely destroyed except for their paintings that remained perfectly undamaged. One of this case is of the family Ron and May Hall. Their house unexpectedly caught on fire and they lost almost everything except for the painting of a crying boy. The painting wasn't even blackened by the smoke. Now, these images were mass printed in the 1950s to the 1970s, so a lot of people own different pictures from this collection. Some people have locked their art away so that no one else buys it or so that their own house doesn't get burnt down. However, there are still some in circulation, so be careful. 
And in our number one spot, we have the auctioned painting. Again, unfortunately, I don't have an image of this painting as it was an original and the artist remains unknown. So this person claims that when he was eight years old, his mother bought a haunted painting from an auction. Now, this painting is of a woman around the age of 30 who is wearing a long bluish gray gown. She is seen standing in front of a veranda with a tea set, kettle, and a plate of cake and sandwiches next to her. They believe that the painting was from around 1900 to 1910. They hung this painting in the hallway, and when they did so, strange activities started happening immediately. Now, they claim that the hallway was always warm since it was summer, but when the painting was hung up, the hallway was always ice cold. All the kids in the family were also scared of this painting. In fact, his little six year old brother would walk on the other side of the hallway. Now, at night, they would often hear whispering coming from the hallway. And one time, they reported seeing a flash of blue in the corner of their eye, like the dress was coming out of the painting. Now, one day, the little brother even tripped down the stairs and said he felt a cold hand push him. And even their pets would growl at the painting. Eventually, they decided to sell the painting to an arts collector. He currently keeps this painting locked up in his basement. 